welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. Coming to us straight from Spiral Lane Productions, the man behind Meteor Tales and Grimstone, now coming back with Theater of Epic, the one and only Angelos Kiprianos. How are you doing today, man? I'm fine. How are you? Thanks for pronouncing my name right. Yes, that's nice. <laughs> that's so refreshing. Yeah. Thank you, man. Well, it's a difficult name. It's a difficult name. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you. I'm pretty sure you've been you've been on other people's shows and they've butchered it. Yeah, I mean, if you hear our past shows, <laughs> every time you announce me, but now it's perfect. Thank you for that. Oh, oh my god. Well, you know how you know how to get into Carnegie Hall, right? Practice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's that's one way. I guess. Oh, well, the other way is the other way is breaking in, but that's another story. <laughs> More likely. So. I've the last few times I've had you on have been have been for fairly st fairly standard role playing games, whether it be both in, both incarnations of Meteor Tales or Gr or Grimstone. Uh, but with the but Theater of Epic, I'd say is a different beast for, compared to your previous work. So, yes. talk with me about how this pro how this particular endeavor came to be. Oh, that's a simple but nice question. Um, well, actually, I uh, I had in mind um, I wanted to create a system that emphasizes solely on the on the role playing aspect of games, which is apparent in every game, in every role playing game, but not uh, st stressed enough or emphasized enough. And so, I want to create something that actually focuses on that aspect and uh, supports it. And I wanted to go back to the roots of uh, pure role-playing because the games I've developed, as you know, are more tactical-based. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not only they have tactical elements, but they also use a grid and they use miniatures and, you know, they, ha they have some war game features. And I, I miss the, the, feel the, uh, the feelings, you know, when I first started role-playing, uh, when we spent entire sessions without any combat and uh, even without any dice. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, to see if I can come up with something that, um, you know, uh, revisits those aspects of the game and uh, not and having actually mechanics that support it, not just, you know, uh, forfeiting the dice because you want to, but because the game actually mm -hmm. says so. Mm hmm and uh, it was uh, also uh, another uh, way to help game masters design their stories in a more theatrical way. But we'll have more on that later. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, one obviously one of the first things that came that um stood that stood out to me is instead of doing free f instead of doing the freeform character creation that you've done in the past, this time you're building upon preset um, archetypes. Um, um, yes. Was that, was the reason for doing that to du to double down on the um, role-playing aspect, as it were? Well, yes. Uh, in Theater of Epic, uh, we don't focus so much on skills and customization and, you know, things you can do with your character. You need archetypes because you need distinct roles. You need to let uh, the people know uh, what what the story is about and what the characters in the story have to do. Uh, the whole uh, purpose of the game is to design a story like you would a theater play, a theatrical play. Mm -hmm. And so you must have clear-cut characters. Archetypes, that you need to know that this character does that and that character does this. And so it must be as clear as possible. And archetypes is the first step to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'm guessing the archetypes that you ha that you have are e are equal parts a pregen and um and its and its advancement scheme. Um. Yes, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, every archetype, every class, can go up to five levels, mm -hmm. and they uh, they get each class gets its own powers, and that's about it. It's mm -hmm. one aspect of the game. So it's clear and straightforward, and uh, everyone knows what to expect. Uh, yeah, more or less. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also the notion that campaigns uh, are meant to last five sessions. Is is that you building upon the idea of like a th like a three act play? Um. Well, to, uh, yes, it's um. It's recommended to play in five sessions. You mm -hmm. can stretch it if you want. You can go up to how many sessions you like. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Theater of Epic uses a milestone system. So for every session, you get one level. The mechanics of the game will get you up to level five, which is the equivalent of level 20 for other games in terms of how you imagine powers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so... I uh, created this five-step layout because I think it's a light game and you can play for uh, some time, but you have to have a clear image of a beginning, uh, a middle, and, a, and an end of the story. And uh, for me, five sessions is a good uh, it's a good number to play a story. It's like a mini series of five episodes. Mm -hmm. Or 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 a couple. Um, full length mo full length movies. Um, yeah, sure. And you can easily go to ten sessions and level up every two sessions. It's mm -hmm. very easy if you like ten episode series, <laughs> if that is, or a, a trilogy of ten hours. Uh, but yeah, you get mm -hmm. the concept. Now, given that, given that. It, to it talks about the characters being actors, so I'm, I'm curious if there's kind of an, if the um, book itself is kind of doing this in-universe thing of taking the th taking the theater aspect, or if that's ju if that's just a manner of dressing. Well, actually, because um, I mean, the motto of the game is a game between game masters and uh, directors and actors, but of course, we're not talking about actual directors. Mm -hmm. And actors per se, uh, or it would be nice, uh, but um, it just uh, it is a reference like that because it needs to define the roles of each party. So, because the game master is a vague term, and a player again is a vague term. We all know what game masters do and what players do in such games, but I needed to redefine these uh, roles because I wanted to. Um, Highlight the difference between the uh, what game masters and directors mm -hmm. because they have similar 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 roles to play, but it, they're not the same. Yeah. Now that br that brings me to the concept of scripts. Now, I think when a lot of people read scripts, they think they're thinking, "Oh, there, there's this." defined rigid approach to characters but i'm guessing that the actor sheet has that has them as little cues or suggestions that are meant to be interpretive yes it's um it's meant to be a bit vague mm -hmm. but it can have some uh, you know specific parts that need to be played out strictly uh, in a particular way that depends on the director I wanted to give a feel, a vibe, similar to that, for example, if you were auditioning for a part in a, a series like, I don't know, Game of Thrones, you would receive your character sheet, let's mm -hmm. say, and you would have some specific scripts. And maybe the scripts were, um, okay, maybe in series they are, you know, very specific when it comes to dialogues and stuff. We don't have that here, but we have character arcs. So, I mean... If you played Theater of Epic and you played Jon Snow, you would receive a script saying that, for example, in the first session, uh, you introduce yourself, people learn that you're a bastard, and so that's, that carries 
some shame, and so you have to, you know, be a bit uh, on the defense when it's referenced because it's an important aspect of your character, and uh, in that setting, it's important, blah, blah, blah. So you get the point. You you have that guideline, a vague guideline, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't have very specific, uh, very specific um, instructions. Apart from that, though, a director might feel that, you know, in that scene, I would like for you to have a monologue, and so I want you to devise a monologue, or you can have this monologue. It's open. Uh, it's up to the director to be as specific or vague as they want. Mm-hmm. Now, there's there, there can be quite a few ways to resolve the die setup. Especially, yes. especially when dealing with a RPG where you where rules for success or failure and the risk of thereof, oh, not thereof. What the hell am I saying? Thereof, um, is paramount. So, with with that in mind, is Theater of Epic doing a um, doing an aim high d six approach? Is it just is it just a single d six with additional ones? How is how does the core die mechanic work? Um, I don't know where the notion of the D6 uh, came from, but it's a D20. I think it's system. because I saw Performance Awards giving a D6 bonus and oh, yes, yeah. that you that were going is for. That is just a meta-currency die uh, you can get as an award, the D6. Uh, but the core system is a, is a classical D20 against a difficulty mm-hmm. uh, setting. And uh, actually, it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, you, you roll the 20 for attack uh, against a defense uh, from, from the opponent. Uh, so there's no surprises there, but um, it's very simple, very straightforward. You get your turn, you play, uh, but you get your turn according to the director's instructions. We don't have an initiative, we have a follow the camera mode mm-hmm. where the director sets the pace and sets the scene and decides who plays first according to the needs of the story and the cinematic aspect of the game. Um, however, when it comes to mechanics, it's a standard D20 system, similar to very to many retro clones uh, out there, and uh, it's also compatible with many games in that, uh, in that sense. Uh, but you don't have any modifiers apart from those you earn from theatricality, from performance. Mm-hmm. So you can have a plus one, plus two, plus three, to your uh, attack roll or any sort of test. If you uh, are, are good with narration, voice acting, body language, these three main aspects are uh, uh, evaluated constantly and give you the uh, appropriate bonuses or penalties. Mm-hmm. Now, given that, obviously this is a roll high D- D20 approach. Um, I'm guess I'm guessing the st- I'm guessing since there's very little in the way of modifiers beyond that beyond that is the baseline difficulty like ten? Yeah, easily. I mean, I I recommend three modes like easy, medium, difficult, and you can take a five, ten, fifteen mm-hmm. difficulty uh, accordingly. Which. Is de- is definitely fair. So you've got se- you've got seventy five, fifty, or twenty five percent chance of success. Sure. And I will admit, when you when the performance bonus was brought up, the first thing that came to mind was the stunt bonus I used to see in the storyteller system, stuff like World of Darkness. You know. To be honest, I never played anything from uh, White Wolf or something like yeah. that, so I, I couldn't say. As you know, I've only, <laughs> I've been playing my stuff since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So, I read some systems from now and then because I have a bookstore and I sell RPG, so I, I have to learn a lot of stuff. But I keep, keep I'm, I'm focused on my stuff, so sometimes I'm completely ignorant yeah. of other uh, similarities and stuff. But I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's I've seen I've seen I've seen an argument that um role playing is different to acting because with acting you have a script and you have an audience. I will I will contend that um 
it's not it's not that much different. It's just that the script and the audience take a different form. The script is essentially your essentially your character sheet. Um, yep. Or the, or there just isn't one if you're dealing if you're doing improv theater, which role playing more or less is, and the audience is the other people at the table, and yep. stuff like the stunt rule or the um, key I, I key system in Tenra, or the um, D6 uh, modifiers in this system. That's no different from audience applause or that or standing ovations or them shouting encore. <laughs> yep. Different coat yeah. of paint, but the same, but the same destination. Yeah. Sure, the concept is the same. Yes. Ah, oh, so the reason I keep using the phrase "all roads lead to Rome." <laughs> yeah. But given given that given that short given that um that very that very brief approach would it would it be fair to say that with each of the each each of the archetypes that you have, um, instead instead of having a instead of having a set um, list of list of skills spells at attacks whatnot, it's largely um, different mo different moves or different actions that they have on their sheet. Um, they have they have their own special abilities. Uh, mm -hmm. Some classes have their own spells. Um, some classes are more multi-classed by nature than others. For example, you can play a ninja, and uh, ninjas have some sort of illusion spells uh, that no one else has, and stuff like that. So everyone has special abilities. Everyone has uh, their own unique stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that is the, uh, the mechanical aspect of the game, and that is the more traditional role-playing uh, game aspect of the game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know what to expect in these things. I mean, you know more or less the kind of spells you will get or the um, special abilities you will get. Um, it, I kept it very traditional when mm -hmm. it comes to classes and races and how they are portrayed. Um, I kept it very traditional because it, it wasn't the aspect I wanted to uh, to be innovative. I wanted to have a traditional rule set and game and uh, a new way a new approach yeah and when it comes to the heavy customization you already have that covered twice with grimstone and with oh um, yes meteor tales oh yes um uh, now would it be fair of me to say that the only die that you're going to be that is going to be used at the table period is either d20 or d6 Actually, you use all the dice because we have different damage dice from the weapons. All right, that uh, that I was that good. I was curious about as well. And the and subsequently, since you have different damage dice, um, how does how does armor work in this system? Is it is it akin to a number that that has to be overcome? Is it um, no. damage reduction? No, no, it's a it's a it's a defense that you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. All right, that that certainly makes sense. And since you, since you have since you have it that there's different um, damage ratings for we for weapons, um, is the way is the way that a character is going to be equipped also preset? Um, no, the equipment is something that you can actually choose. Uh, again, if the director thinks otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They have the upper hand in that thing, um, but uh, no, not every aspect of your heart, character has to be uh, defined, predefined. You, you you can customize your equipment, of course, and stuff like that. Um, the um, the main the core of the character, the the main arc that that is the thing that is predefined. Mm -hmm. Now. With the since character arc and scripts are part of are a big part of how the game is going to work, uh, I am curious if you plan on having a few a few examples or a few guidances for both for both. Sure. Since that there's a lot of ways that those can be taken. Sure. Um, I've got a sample kind of sheet I can read to you. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So, um, for example, 
um, let's say that we have uh, a knight, a paladin, okay? Mm -hmm. Knight, paladin, same thing. Anyways, so it will go like that. Um, the director hands you a uh, character sheet with a role. So we've got, uh, let's say, Sir Nolan Brame, okay? He's a, he's a middle-aged human paladin, starting at level one. And so from the beginning, you get your first character arc, arc okay? Mm -hmm. So it's written down in a specific section of your character sheet. Mm -hmm. And the character arc would go like this. Uh, a violent act in the past still haunts you. Before this adventure ends, you must seek redemption through a heroic deed. That is a general outline. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very short, very simple, very straightforward. Yeah, I can, I can certainly get behind that. Think, for example, Jamie Lannister. Okay, mm -hmm. he begin, he begins like a, I don't know, like a guy that seems generally evil and weird and strange, which he is, of course. But towards, you know, you know, later, spoiler alert, uh, he does a lot of redeeming stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that would be sure, sure, that would be an example of a character yeah. arc, not a script. And um, when it comes to when it comes to spells, because I do I do see the um, the sample character on the she, on the Kickstarter. Um, in regard to pre, in regard to priest spells, for example, since it's on a it's on a tier setup, um, how. Is it a case where each t each tier has a short list of spells? Yes, exactly. And, and every class yeah. has different spells. Mm -hmm. And with the with those when it comes when it comes to that is is it built on a set number of charges in terms of how many spells you can use, or is it or is it not or is it not? No, I never use charges, or I never limit magic. I always allow uh, spellcasters to cast infinite spells, but we have uh, spellcasters must make a roll to cast a spell, and they must overcome a difficulty, mm -hmm. a standard difficulty, depending on the tier level. So they roll against their own, for example, uh, um, to cast a spell, and uh, they either succeed or they fail. And the higher the spell level, the higher the difficulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that certainly makes sense. And of course, I also I also see that you've got you got plenty of the classics when it comes to um oh, when it comes to monsters. In fact, they're set they're set up in the style of the old school monster manual with number of attacks with the diff with the different um attack attack varieties that each has. And I'm cur I'm curious with I'm curious within that since you mentioned um you mentioned e you mentioned each having their own you mentioned each archetype having its own spell list something I'm curious about is if if with it if even more martial characters have something like spells or if they have something to act as an equivalent. Yeah, um, they've got um, some special abilities mm -hmm. like manu maneuvers and stuff like that, and they make up with more hit points, more uh, attacks per round, uh, and other special abilities related to their to their class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's all. That's always uh, that's always something I've br I brought up. How in s in some games the a lot of a lot of the variety of action the diver the diversity yep. of tactics is the it ends up being the domain, the domain of casting characters and martial characters end up being just basic attack for their entire career or yeah i always hate that yeah. or slightly but but hey at higher levels you can do basic attack with a boat with a bonus to the number yeah, yeah it's like spamming the action button all the time <laughs> and yeah. Well, you you've dealt you've played your fair share of fighting games. You know how an easy way to get everybody mad at you is spamming the same attack over and over. Yep, exactly. So, if we don't allow that in games, if we don't allow that in fighting games, why should we allow that in role playing games? 
Yep. Yep. Exactly. But even even with the even with that, it's it's sounding like the even for characters with higher amounts of hit points, it sounds like it's not going to be that high. And I'm also curious if um, if da if damage for both players and monsters is on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, can you can you repeat that? What what do you mean? Um, I'm curious. It ta early on in the Kickstarter it talks about battles being swift and de and deadly with few hit points. Yes. And I'm I'm curious if that swiftness also applies to high damage. Oh, um, because you don't have many modifiers and you don't have attributes, which is very important to stress. Mm -hmm. You don't have constitution and bonuses and stuff like that. The number of hit points is limited. It's a small number. And just because you have... I mean, you roll for every level you gain for how many hit points you have. And monsters are designed in a similar way. And so, because you don't have any modifiers when it comes to those kind of bonuses or penalties, you get a small number of hit points. It could be 10, 20, 30, something like that by the end of the campaign. And so, as you can understand, it's a small number to, to beat. And... Uh, that makes a combat last for just a short while. It's bound to happen. You don't have all these huge numbers. You don't have hundreds of hit points because you don't have many, many, many levels. And you don't have all these modifiers adding to your total hit points and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Small numbers, short battles. Yeah, I, I, can, I can get that. And s since you mentioned that you're using a camera system instead of... Um, traditional initiative is it? Is it something like popcorn initiative, where pe where somebody gets an action, then the then it's handed over to a different person? Yeah, but the uh, the director dictates it. He mm -hmm. he calls the shots. He can decide who goes first. He can decide that only monsters play, uh, only player, only only characters play. It's it's up to him entirely because. Uh, they set the pace. It's like describing an, uh, an action in a movie, an action scene in a movie, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a purpose behind that. So maybe he wants to increase a dramatic effect. Maybe he wants to achieve something else, like horror elements, stuff like that. So it's on them. It's on them entirely. Uh, mm -hmm. Many directors will want to keep a traditional. I don't know. Um, you know, clock, clockwork, uh, turn order, something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, it's open to interpretation. Yeah, that may, that certainly fits. So, with that with that in mind, uh, what would what would you would you do? You plan on putting a few um sa a few sample adventures just to show the flow of of the of the five or more session approach yeah uh, in the main book there's an adventure included which is not short it's uh, actually a regular adventure mm -hmm. uh yeah. it's based on a on a book on a fantasy novel i've written it's called caradra shipwreck mm -hmm. and uh it takes place in vitalia the old familiar world from metal tales but it's not important it could be anything uh, mm -hmm. any type of setting but uh, I've taken this uh, novel, broken it down to five acts. Uh, I've changed some aspects to fit better, you know, the, the game mm -hmm. experience. And I also make some reference uh, references inside the book of how to convert some other stories. And uh, yeah, you can have you can have a perfectly fine adventure to play with the main book uh, that will uh, get you. From start to finish, and they will also give you a handful of characters uh, from various classes. So yeah, it's a very good introductory story. Mm -hmm. And what are you shooting for as far as a total page count for the book? I know that you do have a, f a few stretch goals planned, but just as a baseline, I'd say hundred pages. I say hundred pages. I I try to keep it light and small. I don't. Uh, I don't like creating large books. 
Linux unless it's a heavy or a big system like MetaTales. Um, so I'd say 100 pages and I'm not exactly sure about the ratio, but I, I'd say like 70, 30, 60, 40, the, the core rules and the adventure or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can get I can get that. And I will be I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it how it develops. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all, all the way to my show and enjoy the madness that happens around here. I thank you, Bildra. It's always a pleasure. I always enjoy talking to you about stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>